In recent years, the subject of rewilding has got more attention by the media. Usually, when covering the topic, it is about reintroducing lost species. Beavers are often featured as they have been reintroduced in parts of Britain. And for examples of what other animals could be reintroduced, lynx and wolves are the two that are usually mentioned. However, there is one large mammal that is rarely, if ever, gets mentioned, which is strange as it is probably the easiest of the large mammals that went extinct in Britain to reintroduce, as unlike lynx and wolves, it poses no threat at all to livestock, as it is not a carnivore. The animal is the Eurasian elk, or more commonly known to English speakers as the moose. The largest species of the deer family, the Eurasian elk is thought to have gone extinct in Britain sometime during the Bronze Age. The most recent dated elk bones to have been found are 3,900 years old and were discovered in Scotland. The Eurasian elk still lives in the wild in Scandinavia and parts of Eastern Europe. It was common in what is now France and Germany in the Roman period, but declined in numbers from that era onwards, until, like in Britain, they ceased to exist in the wild. In countries such as Russia, Norway, Sweden and Finland, the populations number in the hundreds of thousands and are controlled by annual regulated hunting. Unlike other types of deer, the elk does not live in herds and is a solitary animal. The ideal habitat for them is bogs, rivers and forests, both conifer and deciduous. They are not grass grazers, but browsers, and have a diet of aquatic plants from rivers and lakes, as well as tree saplings, shrub leaves, etc., their home range size varies between 4 to 92 kilometers squared, and some migrate between sites at different times of the year for food. Currently, the only Eurasian elks living in Britain are at outdoor zoo reserves such as the Highland Wildlife Park, where they have two. These elks had twins in 2016. Perhaps the most realistic way to increase the elk population is to add them to more managed private estates and nature reserves that include wetlands and woodland. Then, if possible, after studying where they might be able to live successfully and what impact they have, some could be tagged and released into national park areas where they can be monitored and managed but have a wider area to live. The biggest reasons reintroduction might never happen is a lack of suitable wild habitat as many of Britain's wildest areas are moors, not woodland. Intensive farming, an increased urbanised country with a high population and large amounts of traffic as they can be a risk to cause.